doing? Hello, everybody. Live with Carla Nicole. Absolutely gorgeous day, as you see. I'm out at the park. Just taking on that beautiful view. Started a little late today, but that's okay. A little. So, we're going to get started very shortly. But I wanted to talk today about forgiveness. You know, um, I have quite a few people inbox me about different scenarios or different things that happen in their life or or things that come up and, and they're frustrated and, and furious and angry and bitter and, and frustrated because someone hurt them or someone ticked them off or someone made them angry. And so because of, because of someone being angry or upset, it's, um, it's sad because no one really wants to admit that forgiveness has a lot to do with you. As we look into this beautiful scenic time and, and gorgeousness of the earth, what if the seasons didn't forgive each season for coming in and everybody or all seasons just clashed? There would be no summer, there would be no winter, there would be no spring. So, you know, it's very important and imperative that we see past how upset we get over things that happen in our life. So anyways, I want to welcome everybody. Greg, welcome. Mario, Rodney, Abragon. So glad you guys are here. Like I said, today is about forgiveness. And are we willing to forgive is the question. A lot of times it's not easy to do so. It's much easier to be frustrated and angry. But I think a lot of times what we fail to remember is that we can get real attached. Real attached to the anger, the bitterness, and the hurt. When we should really be focusing on how great life is. So... Welcome everybody. It is a scorcher out here. It's about 90 degrees. Maybe 95. I don't know. But it's hot. It's very hot. So, welcome everybody. Carla Nicole. Single mother of two children. Um, and today it is absolutely blazing, but it's gorgeous. And I just wanted to give you guys something to think about. You know, I get a lot of inboxes. People want to reach out to me and ask me, well, should I forgive somebody for something that they've done? Should I um, listen and hear them out? Should I uh, tell them um, that, you know, I forgive them? Or should I let them continue to not know if I do or not? These are questions I get a lot in my inboxes because people just really want to know what's going to be what can I do? How can I find peace with telling someone I forgive them? You know, the peace that we get when we say you're forgiven not only brings peace to them, but it brings peace to you. Do you know why you get peace when you release someone else? It's because you cut the cord. You cut the cord of the frustration. You actually remove them from the offense and you allow them to say, okay, it happened. Maybe it was a time in their life they, that, they, that, that they did something that they are not pleased with and, and maybe they are ashamed of. And they just want to have that time where they can let it go. Good afternoon, Angela. Beautiful. So glad to see you. I hope you are doing wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I do not want to forget, now that I mentioned that, I don't want to forget all of you handsome, hardworking, devoted fathers. I want to say happy Father's Day to every one of you. Um, you are one of the main, main, major reasons that the that this planet is still going around. And I don't want it to go unnoticed that fathers are very, very, very important. 
So I want to wish all you fathers a very, very happy Father's Day. So <clears throat> back to what I was saying. It's very important that we don't lose sight of the fact that sometimes we can get hurt. Sometimes we can get frustrated. Sometimes we can get disappointed. And all kinds of things can happen to where we're, we, we feel that someone has done us a disservice. Okay? And that happens. Life is life, so things happen. But it's very important that we do forgive. Now, I had a gentleman reach out to me maybe about three days ago. And he asked me, he said, should I forgive this scenario? And I said, well, talk to me. What's your scenario? He said, well, my child's mother um, does, not let me, does not let me see my children. And um, I feel like... I feel like um, my children have been kidnapped from me. And I was like, wow. He says, do you believe I should forgive? And I said, well, um, let me be clear about something. And I want to make sure that you guys get this because this is very important. Forgiveness is not, forgiveness is not permission to harm you. And I think a lot of people that forgiveness means that you are giving them permission to hurt you or that you are giving them permission to break free from how they hurt you. That's not true. Forgiveness is allowing the offense of whatever happened to be released from your life. You're not condoning it. You're not giving it permission. You're not giving an okay on it. You're not approving it. What you're saying is I am giving you from the offense what you did to me was unexcusable or inexcusable or maybe it was one of the hardest things that I ever had to deal with but I'm going to forgive you and when you forgive when you forgive someone you will be amazed at how free you become because let me tell you something forgiveness is a practice forgiveness is a practice we have to practice forgiving. We have to practice forgiving other people. No one is perfect, including ourselves. What I always often try to tell people and what I explain to him is, I understand you feel violated. <clears throat> you feel raped by not being able to have the interaction with your children at this time. But forgive it anyways. Forgive it anyways. In your forgiveness, understand this, your, the mother of your children can hold you from your, ch from, from your children um, while she has custody of your children. However, eventually your children will get grown. And your children may seek to find you on their own, or you may seek to find them when they're grown. And and you know what? It's imperative that we understand this. Children are on borrowed time. They are not here forever under our care. So with that said, we want to make sure that you understand that this is just this is just a moment in time. But forgive it anyway. In your forgiveness, what you are doing is you are evolving away from that situation and you are giving that completely and totally away from your life now it also allows you to heal in your forgiveness ask God this to ask your children to seek to find you in their time when they're adults and when they're able to and then allow you time to speak and the best thing that a parent can do that's in this situation is never damn the other parent. Never damn the other parent. Because when you damn the other parent and you tell that child that that parent isn't this and that parent isn't that, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. Talk to your children about what you are going to provide them.
and although the time has lapsed and you did not have um, bless you you do not have the influence that you probably desired while they were young in their development in their development to years tell them that you wanted to be there but outside of that give them what you weren't able to give them which is now your voice without damning the mother this is the most important thing you can do as a parent children are well received but they will receive you better when you don't don't say something negative about the other parent understand not not all parents are parental guides they're just not they're not able to be and that's fine but you have the opportunity that once they're grown you then will have the opportunity to say hey I'm you know I'm unable to um, put forth the energy to try to sustain you but what I will do is I will improve our relationship now because we now have the time to do that so I always encourage people forgive anyway even in the most hurtful in the most hurtful it's not easy to do but you can you can forgive so I want to um, so I see talent coach said that uh, he wishes he said um, he wishes he had he found his biological father um, I hope that, that that happens for you uh, Angela says we forgive in order for God to forgive us we forgive so we ourselves can heal yes Angela absolutely forgiveness ain't easy but it's worth it that's very true talent coach you know forgiveness is not easy it is a practice you must practice it every day I mean essentially you have to practice forgiveness every day you cannot half step forgiveness you have to really be mindful of what you can do to help other people Hey, glad to see you're here. And you know, when you move forward after you forgive someone, it's a beautiful thing. You find yourself um, less bitter. One of the most powerful things about um, living this life is living a life with almost less bitterness and more empowerment to help others. When we're bitter, when we're angry, we're not as efficient when it comes to being able to help others because we're so angry and, and we spend, a, you know, anger takes a lot of energy. <laughs> Let's just call it true. When you're angry about something, it takes a lot of energy. It really does. But when you're not, you feel a, a level of freedom. You feel a level of freedom and you feel a level of happiness. And that's what you want. You want to have a level of happiness and a level of freedom in your life. So I don't know if anyone on here today has a question that they want to know if they should forgive something or not. Um, I do have another person that came to me uh, recently that said that they were frustrated about um, their boyfriend having an affair on them. And the affair was, uh, the affair was with their, um, a close cousin of theirs. And they asked me, they said, well, what should we do? Should we forgive them or, or not? And, and I said, well, let me just tell you this. Everyone has other interests, has other attractions through life. Um, and you know, you really don't know if you will be moved by someone or not. You know what I'm saying? And one of the best levels of, of advice I gave my daughter, I told her a long time ago, I said, well, you know, um, affairs that people get so caught up about I said think about it this way a lot of times we always think about us being the victim of an affair but we never put ourselves 
as the person having the affair, not when we think of it in our mind. So I told my daughter, I said, imagine you're the one doing the affair and your boyfriend found out. What level of grace and forgiveness would you want him to give to you? And I told her to think about that very intently and then become that. Because just because you don't have an affair or just because you're faithful doesn't mean you do no wrong. Affairs can happen, yes. But affairs aren't always just about the sexual experience. Sometimes affairs are because of connection. Sometimes affairs are because of, of understanding, relating. It's not always about sex, like everybody seems to think it is. And I just want people to get away from thinking, well, I can't forgive him because he did this or did that. And sometimes it has nothing to do with you. Connections are connections. In this lifetime, we may find ourselves connected to other people, attracted to other people, involved with other people. But it doesn't make us a bad person. It doesn't make that we care less about the person we're with. It just maybe means that I'm, I'm finding some, a newfound side of myself with this person. You know, a lot of times we think everything is concrete. It's either black or right. You're either with me or you're not. <laughs> you either want to be with me or you don't. Do you want a relationship or not? Are we getting married or not? It's like, um, can we just, can we just care about each other? Can we just relate to each other? Can we see if we are good for each other? Because to be honest, and I said this earlier to a friend of mine, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Every man isn't going to be able to stomach me. Not every man am I going to fit snug with. There's going to be some guys that just is like, oh, I can't stand her. And that's fine. We, we're not for everybody. But I think a lot of times we get so caught up in the fact that we want to be, you know, everything to everyone that we're in a relationship with. But every man I'm in a relationship with doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be married to. Doesn't make that good or bad. It just makes it what it is. So we have to see past that. We got to get over all of this nonsense. But I told her, I said, forgive him anyway. I understand that he had an affair. And I understand that you're hurt and upset. And you're upset with your cousin and all that other stuff. I said, but does that mean that you're not going to be able to function as a relationship? If you're not able to be in a relationship anymore, then that's fine. Then don't be. But that doesn't mean that you have to now not be friends anymore. You can't, I don't want nothing to do with him. Uh, we're not together, so I don't want anything to do with him. Well, I mean, that's your, that's your choice. But are you away because you two can't get along? Or you, you two don't match in a relationship? I mean... You had more than that, right? You didn't just go in it just to be intimate, right? I'm hoping you didn't get in a relationship with this man just to be sexual with him. Oh, let me guess. You were in it just to be sexual with him. I think we, we need to get outside of our thinking sometimes. We think that the only thing we gain when we're in a relationship is our permission, permission to have sex. And that's not necessarily always the best thing I don't think because you know um, you talk to a lot of people in relationships and they're not even having a fulfilling intimate relationship they're miserable they're not well he doesn't really do everything I want to do or she's not really all that into it and, oh it's just a chore it's like why are you together I I'm confused why, why are you together just to say you're in a relationship, we got to do better with that too. We need to get outside of thinking that we're not enough if we're not in a relationship. So I told her, I said, well, you need to look at you. I mean, real talk. Are you going to harbor into this unforgiveness to the point where you're just going to hold on to it forever? And you're not going to want to go into anything else with anybody else because all men are dogs. 
I said, you need to get off of that right now because that's not a sufficient way to look at things either. You need to see past the fact that, okay, he had an affair. So what? Are you with him or not? Are you going to stay or not? You need to make that decision. Well, you know, we have had some years in. Well, the years don't have anything to do with it. You can have 20, 30 years in with somebody and be miserable. So that doesn't mean anything either. Do you have a care for this man? Do you really, truly care about him? And people that came to my workshop know that I tell them very clearly what love is. Love is care and understanding. <laughs> Two key components. Whether you're married or not. If you love somebody, you better have those two components or you're not in love. You're in lust. I'm telling you again. Love is care and understanding. Period. If you don't have care and you don't have understanding, you are in lust. I don't care if you're married or not. You can be in lust with your husband and be miserable. You can be in lust with your girlfriend and miserable. It is what it is. But if you really love somebody, you understand them. So if he was man enough to come to you and tell you, I, I, I made a mistake and I'm asking you for your forgiveness and will you trust me again? You need to now look at yourself and say, can I do that? Can I do that? Can I, can I be able to do that? Am I able to do that? Am I able to say that I am um, willing to be somebody for you and willing to sacrifice myself? Because isn't that what relationships are about? Aren't we sacrificing something? <laughs> we're, we're sacrificing something. We're sacrificing freedoms. We're sacrificing something by being in a relationship. So like I told her, when you say, yes, I'll be your girlfriend or yes, I'll be your wife or yes, whatever you said yes to, you agreed that you would make some sacrifices to something. And here's your sacrifice right here. Are you willing to take it on or not? Only she can answer that. And I told her, we sacrifice a lot of stuff, but do we really want to sit down and look at each other and say, I really love you? You say you love somebody, but you don't care and you don't understand them. But you love them though. Is that what you're telling me? How do you love then? We have to see past all this extra dominance. Well, I want to make sure that he's going to be with me and he's not going to cheat. Well, no, there's no guarantees. You can be married for 50 years and your husband cheats. One time. You're going to give away that whole marriage for 50, for 50 or let's see, 50 minutes of pleasure? You're going to give away 50 years. That's how, that's how it works? Okay. That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. We really need to see past a lot of the stuff that we're getting so hung up on. We gotta, what are you asking me, Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so we need to really sit down and look at what is it? Are we seeing past some of the things? And I, another thing we need to really think about, it's okay to, to love somebody, it is. But are we loving to a, to a, a full degree or are we half stepping when we say we love somebody I mean really are we just half ass loving <laughs> let's ask that question because <laughs> oh I love him when he's doing right by me I love him when he's good I love him when he buys me stuff I love him when he does nice but when, he, when we're arguing I don't love him really <laughs> okay so you only love him when he's in good graces with you that's not fair. That's not right. Nor is that the way to love someone. You have bad days. You have days when you're not so warm loving or cuddly as the cuddle bears that we have on our, on our beds when we're little kids. You're not that loving all the time either. But we expect him to cater to us, right? Well, he's not catering to me. He's not catering to me, so I don't have time for it. Really? <laughs> Your man has sometimes, it will make some mistakes. It just is what it is. He will make mistakes. I mean, okay. But then what? If your man makes mistakes, you're going to leave him? I said earlier today, I posted this. I said it's easier to leave. 
but it's harder to stay together. Easier to leave. The hell with it. You don't want to give me what I want, I'm leaving. You don't want to give me the ring, I'm gone. I'm going to walk away from a guy that really cares about me because he, this one wants to give me three carat diamond. But the three carat diamond might cost you more headache than you ever had in your ho whole entire life. But you're going to leave the guy that cares about you because he ain't going to give you no ring. We need to get back to understanding what is care, what is honor, what is love, what is respect. A lot of times we say we want relationships. But we really don't know what that means. Relationships mean sacrificing. You gotta, <laughs> listen, you gotta sacrifice some stuff. You have to sacrifice. I'm sorry. We talk about Christ on the cross all the time. Oh, Jesus has died on the cross. But y'all don't talk about the sacrifice. What are you sacrificing to be in a relationship with somebody? Are you? If you're not sac sacrificing, okay, then you don't need to be in a relationship. Period. Learn to understand this. When we have friendships, when we have girlfriends, we have a tendency to be like, oh, for my girlfriend, I'll do this. For my girlfriends, I'll do that. And she can come here and I can go there. And we'll do all kinds of sacrifices for our girls. But we won't sacrifice a damn thing for a man. I'm not coming all the way over there. Can't you come over here and pick me up? Why do I got to come all the way over there and spend the night? Can't you come over here? It's like, dang, y'all don't have any kind of care for your mate. But you will go all out of your way for your girls. But your man asks you to do something, it's a problem. No, it's not fair. So we got to get over that too. We have to learn how sacrifices are what they are. We all have to make them. Even for our children, we have to make them. Right, Nina? We already know. We have to make them. We will both make mistakes. Absolutely. Angela, Angela you are right. So if we're making mistakes, then there has to be a level of forgiveness on both ends. Well, I had to forgive his affair, but I ain't never played on him. Okay, but you probably did other things that's just as equivalent. But notice this. Nobody ever talks about what someone else has done. They always talk about the person that did the affair, but they never talk about the other one that, that the affair was done on, what they did. You ever notice that? So they're just the victim in the relationship? So they're perfect and this one's imperfect. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that's a little, <laughs> that's a lopsided view. I mean, let, we'll just use, we'll just use Beyonce and Jay-Z as an example. Everybody knows Jay-Z had an affair, right? Everybody, she was, he was with Becky and all this other stuff, but we don't hear nothing about what Beyonce does or doesn't do. Nothing. So, oh, poor little Miss Beyonce, she's doing nothing wrong. She's all angel. And he's out here messing around with women. Is that true? Really? So Beyonce doesn't have attitudes. Beyonce is a, is a pristine mother. Beyonce does everything right in her marriage. Beyonce doesn't argue. She doesn't give anything wrong to her husband. I'm saying this as an example. But we don't talk about none of that. We only talk about what he did wrong. Because his error is all over the, all over the media. Everyone wants to talk about what he did wrong. But nobody wants to talk about her. We have to think about something. And be honest with yourself. We got to get off of this thinking that we're perfect because we're not. We got to get past thinking that we do no wrong because we're faithful. Okay, we got to get past that. We have to also think about something that's very important. Learn how to be a forgiving spirit and stop always spending so much time thinking about how you're going to be victimized in your relationship. Don't get in one if that's all you think about. Oh, he's going to cheat. Oh, he's going to do this wrong to me. Oh, I'm going to have this happen to me. All that stuff is energy. You're inviting that in. And as you're inviting that in, most likely that's going to be your reality, unfortunately. So we got to get past that. It's imperative we see better. And we do better. Got the keys? Yeah, they're in my pocket. Look at those I know. So we have to see better and we have to do better. At someone else's mistakes we only look at people's people's uh um mishaps or 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 their uh, errors but we never want to talk about how we can do better and we can 
We just have to shed light on what can we do to improve. We're not always going to be angelic out here. We make mistakes. We do. <laughs> it just is what it is. We're human. But we have to learn to forgive. And when we forgive, we give a, a, a such a gift to the person that did something wrong. And when they did something wrong, they, they'll learn from it. We got to get off of this revenge stuff too. Stop thinking that you have to be the one to, to seek the revenge. That's going to be next week. I'm going to talk about how revenge doesn't serve us well. Being revengeful is a horrible state to be in. But many like to live in it. And it's an ugly, ugly, ugly space. But I really hope that you guys got something from this today. I really hope that people understand that things don't have to be the end all to be all. Things happen, okay? It is what it is. Doesn't mean your life is over either. It just means something happened. We can do better. We really can. But we have to we have to begin to look at ourselves and see how we can become more forgiving in our heart. Stop looking at ourselves as always going to be the victim and start looking at ourselves as maybe being the one making the mistakes. And we and you know when we do that, we actually improve who we are. Because we're not looking at, oh, I'm I'm Miss Perfect and he's Mr. Mean and he's Mr. Bad and I do everything right. You gotta get off of that thinking. It's not healthy for you, nor is it healthy for your relationship that you so called want so bad. So think about it. All right. Hey Bray. I hope everybody enjoyed today. I was on a little late, but <laughs> he said a little late, but I was on a little late, but it's okay. We made it. Mom, it's... it was an hour late. It was an hour late, yes. But that's okay. You guys stuck by me and loved me anyway. Well, we are out of here. Love you guys. Please be sure to share this video. Um, I'll be on next week and we're going to talk about revenge. Lord help us. All right? So we're out of here. Carla Nicole.